Hey, this is Michael. Uh, we got to shoot some footage with ProRes RAW, but I wanted to do some tests between ProRes RAW and actual Cinema DNG just to see if there was any difference I could tell in either the edit or the capture. So that's what I'm going to do. Quick intro and hang around. So I'm back from the test and from the edit, and here's kind of my wrap-up thoughts. I've never actually shot with Cinema DNG before. I've never had a camera capable of doing it, so I was really excited to try this test out. I did process the Cinema DNG through DaVinci Resolve 15, um, and what surprised me when I did that, I processed it into ProRes 4444HQ. What really surprised me when I did that was how dark the images seem to come out. Uh, the ungraded files look incredibly dark until you start adding in your contrast back. And I didn't think it was going to work, but at the same time, when I got into grading it, there's a ton of detail there. Um, I was really impressed with how much detail the Cinema DNG held when compared to the RAW ProRes. There's nothing wrong with the RAW ProRes, but the Cinema DNG DNGs just worked really well. I was able to get the image to look the way I wanted a little faster and a little easier with the Cinema DNG. Uh, that being said, these little short clips that I took, all told in Cinema DNG, they were 40 some odd gigs, and I shot probably less than a minute. I didn't go outside because it was super windy today. Um, but I really like the look when compared to the RAW ProRes. Now when I processed that through DaVinci and exported them, I ended up with uh, about four, 24 gigs of ProRes 4444HQ and the ProRes files that I shot, which are not the exact same length as the Cinema DNGs, but they were very similar in length, uh, ended up to be about 20 gigs. So you're not saving a lot of space compared to the highest quality ProRes, but you are saving about half as much space as a Cinema DNG. That makes sense because Cinema DNG takes a lot of data, and ProRes, one of their main selling points is a uh, bit rate goal. Like, they always try and get the bit rate of the file into a certain file size. At least that's my understanding from what the white papers say. Um, at the moment, given a choice, I would probably shoot Cinema DNG from this camera. The FS7 with the Atomos Shogun Inferno. Uh, overall, the image just held up really well. With the ProRes RAW, I saw a lot of that Sony green cast. I shoot with a lot of Sony cameras, and I like them, but they do kind of have a green tint to them on a lot of their images, and that can take a lot of time to get working well. Um, I was impressed. Uh, in the underexposed shots, which were purposefully underexposed, uh, the ProRes RAW broke a lot faster than the Cinema DNG. 
neither one did a great job. Cinnamon DNG held more highlight info, but neither one did a good job underexposed, so always expose your shots correctly. Um, what does this lead me to? If you've been paying attention to NAB, you know that Blackmagic is about to put out the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which is basically the Pocket Camera Type 2. I'm super excited about that. And one of the first things I thought when I first started reading about it and studying it was, I wonder if they're going to get ProRes RAW. At this point, I don't know if I like that. I would probably just shoot Cinema DNG. It's going to take a ton more file, so file space, but at the same time, the images coming off of the Cinema DNGs are really, really nice. And I'm sure people that have shot with Cinema DNG before know that. Um, if you only have ProRes RAW and you have a choice between ProRes RAW and no RAW, um, that's a hard press to say because the file size you're going to get, the file size you're going to be getting is huge in terms of the difference it's going to make. So, wrap-up thoughts, too long, didn't listen. I really like Cinema DNG. I was really impressed with how it works. Um, I could scrub through both in DaVinci real-time on this machine. It's a 2013 MacBook, pretty high-end, but at the same time it just did a really good job holding up and actually transferring the files and playing back the files. So, I don't know right now. I like Final Cut Pro 10, but at the same time, the fact that ProRes RAW only works in Final Cut 10 at the moment, um, I don't know. It's a tough call at the moment. I'm trying to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, especially now that they're incorporating Fusion even closer than Adobe does with After Effects. Um, it's going to be interesting. This is a very fascinating time to be a filmmaker. And it's exciting, and there's so many options right now. Something I always have to remind myself is, all these things, they're just tools. What's really important is the stories that you're telling, whether that's stories of uh, testimonials after surgeries or uh, narrative films. It's using the best tool you have at your disposal to tell the best possible story. What that's going to be is individually up to you for the moment, and really like in Cinema DNG. So we'll see. This has been Michael. Thank you very much, and we will catch you later.